Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at Smash Ultimate 6 Summit Voting. It's finally here. That Summit season is around the corner and the voting is always excited. People get way too mad. People do crazy challenges. Everything is just great and in today's video we're going to be going over some players that I think you should consider for voting as well as some serious threats that could do a bunch of damage within Summit. So let's just get right into it. Now there are four players that can make it in through the voting phase as well as one player is going to make it through at Collision but we're not going to talk about that in this video. We'll talk about that in the collision video, but I'm going to be breaking this up into three categories. The first one is going to be your already established top players that have just been farming at the super top level for a while now that are probably going to do pretty well at Summit. The second one is going to be the wild cards that can either do very, very well or very poorly. Like they could beat everyone at Summit, but they might not. And then we have a couple up and coming players that I want to talk about that I think not only the Summit experience could help them get crazy, crazy good, but I also think that they could cause some serious damage. So the first player that we got to mention for these amazing players is going to be Sonics. Now, Sonics has been doing the best he's ever done recently. Definitely top 10 in the world right now. I have him at number 6. He has been farming, and he's almost at that level of being in that top 4 consideration of, like, you know, Tweak, Leo, Spargo, and Aqua. And he can beat any of those players, and has beaten some of those players. Sonics is absolutely unreal. I say right now, there's like that S plus tier, those big four. Then there's that S tier with like him, Light, Shuton, T, someone else I'm probably forgetting. Like, there are so many amazing players right now, and Sonics is one of those ones who is pushing the meta so far. He's making Sonic look like that top one broken character. Like, he is doing absolutely amazing. So if you want high level play at Summit, you're definitely going to want him in here. Another person like that is Onan. And even though Onan has been doing a little bit rough recently, like, you know, 9th at Main Stage 25th at Let's Make Big Moves. Ninth at Main Stage honestly isn't that bad. Still got a T win as well. He still has a second at Let's Make Moves Miami. A fifth at LSI. Like Onan is absolutely unreal. Definitely the best Steve in NA. One of the best players in the world. I don't know if he's quite in that top 10 range right now just because it is ever changing in Ultimate. And he does have a bit of a rough performance here. But he could cause some serious damage at Summit. He's still has a record on Leo, even though they've only played once, and it was a very long time ago now at this point. Be kind of hyped to see that run back again, which probably would happen, because they would make it both very far into the bracket. Our next player is going to be Osimo, and we're only going to look at this one run, because we really only need to look at this one run to show how good he is. He got wins on Pesetti Man, Atorie, Kameme, Yoshidora, Zachary, and Akla within the span of one tournament, only losing to Akla, getting second at Kagari B9, which was an S plus super major. That tournament was absolutely stacked to the brim. And he beat Akla in Japan, which does not happen. People don't really beat Akla in Japan. Like, that just shows how amazing he is. Definitely the best radio in the world at this point. I mean, we kind of knew, but like, I guess re cementing it. Like, he is incredibly strong. And all I'm saying is the last time that Osimo got second at a Kagaribi, he went to an invitational and did very, very well. So. It only makes sense that he just got second at another Kagaribi. He should be going to Summit. He kind of earned it. So I think if you want to see Osimo in Summit, he could cause some serious damage. Like, he has some good records against some American players despite only being here a couple times. Like, Osimo is such a top-level threat that you just have to worry about if he's in your bracket path. He can beat literally anyone. Our next player is going to be Jake, who gets extremely underrated because he plays Steve. And the people that are above him with Steve are Odin and Aqua. And those are players that are, it's like, very easy to overlook someone because because Aqua is like Aqua and Odin is Odin, but Jake's level of consistency is absolutely unreal. His only bad performance in the last like handful of months is SmashCon, which was 33rd, and he's still gonna win on Gen, but he is 7th at Double Down, wins on Gact, Kome, Quandale, Void, Modzai, 9th at CEO, wins on Mudes, who just got 2nd at Genesis, like that's insane. Also, Fusix, Regalo, and a couple other players. He has his 5th at Riptide, wins on Luis, Toast, PK, Chris, 7th at Glitch, wins on Ken, Alternus, uh, Unleash, like. Jake's consistency is unreal. 5th at UFA, 9th at Let's Make Moves Miami, 13th at Let's Make Big Moves, where he got a bunch of good wins. Got a salt one win. Like, Jake is absolutely phenomenal. Such a consistent Steve player right now. Oh, outplaced Odin, by the way, at Let's Make Big Moves, so I guess he's officially better now. Again, I don't really make the rules. That's just how it goes, but Jake is absolutely unreal. I don't think he has a ton of votes right now, but maybe we'll see a magic spike after this video to get him in because he is actually phenomenal and definitely deserves at least the consideration of the spot. Jackal as well, another very consistent player with some of the highest highs I've seen in Smash. Like, I know this is like an old tournament, but you look back at SmashCon Fall Fest when Jackal was having that run. If Jackal beat Spargo, which he was very, very close to doing, by the way, I think there's not a chance that he loses that tournament. I think he would have destroyed. Jackal with momentum is so scary. We saw a bit of that at Apex as well, where he, this is for a summit or another, a Smash World Tour qualifier spot, rest in peace, but he got wins on Tilde, Leon, Syrup, DeBuzz, MPG. It wasn't like he was destroying them in these sets, but he's tearing through. This loser's bracket did end up losing to Mia, but still second in 
the major is pretty good, as well as some other good performances. Knight that lets make moves Miami, fifth at Glitch Regen, seventh at Shine again. Jackal's just one of those players who is incredibly consistent, and he plays Wolf and Wolf is hype. So if you want to see some good gameplay in Summit, Jackal is definitely amazing voted. And the final player of this category, even though all the players like are probably in the caliber of this because everyone is insane at this game right now, is going to be Aaron, who again, kind of the same thing as Jake. I think it's overshadowed a little bit because Tweak also plays Diddy Kong. And when you have a top rep, a top four player in the world player character, it's just kind of tough because people are like, oh, look at the Diddy. That's just tweaking. And there's no one else. So it's like, no, there's a lot of very good Diddy players and probably second. And his consistency, again, is absolutely unreal. He also has this 13th at SmashCon with wins on SkyJ, Tilde, MFA twice, MK Big Boss. He won Pax West Arena wins on Salt 1 and Light 2 wins on Salt 1. 17th at Big House, 17th at Let's Make Moves Miami, 25th at Umabora, 9th at CEO, 7th at Gommel. Like, Aaron is just such an amazing player, as well as having some pretty strong secondaries. I'd say the main one's probably going to be the Raw, but he has a decent Pyramithra as well. Maybe we see, like, he has played a lot of characters here. Maybe we see the Joker. I'm not really familiar with it, but hey, it's Summit. Anything could happen. Aaron also had, like, kind of his debut, I'd say, at Summit 3, so maybe we get that run back. He makes another amazing run like he did there. I think he definitely could because he is, like, one of the fanciest Diddy Kong players I've ever seen, and he's competing against Tweak. Tweak is the king of fancy, and Aaron still makes himself look super, super sick. Now, a couple people in this category that I just forgot to mention because my organization skills are very bad are going to be Umeki and Mars, starting off with Umeki. He does have this 25th at Kagaribi, where he only lost to Masha and Zachary, so your losses aren't really that bad. He also has this 9th at Umabora, which is very, very good. He wins on Torie and Noi, has this 2nd at Subageki 12, and this 7th at Winter, which for some reason was a major because every single Japanese top player and their mother was at this event, but Umeki is, like, probably one of the scariest players in the world off of hit. If you get hit by Umeki, you are going for a ride, and it's going to be a long ride because Peach combos do take a little bit of time to execute, as well as Umeki's out of shield game, because he does footstool turn up stuff out of shield because he is just that guy. Umeki will explode you for every single hit. Again, he's a Peach player, so his movement is absolutely incredible. If you liked watching Mudeis at Genesis, you're going to like watching Umeki because Mudeis might be the best Peach, but Umeki is the best Daisy. This way the guy plays, it's, or the way this guy plays, it's just absolutely unreal. I'd highly recommend voting for him if you want to see some more good Peach or Daisy gameplay, and our last one is going to be, of course, Mars, and, like, the Mars is Wash meme is, I think, pretty over-exaggerated, because out of, like, at least recent tournaments that we care about, the only ones that he did bad at are going to be Double Down and Smash Cut, which are, like, your S-plus Super Majors, so people are going to do bad at them, and the losses aren't even that bad, to be honest, like, one of them is an Olimar, but after that, ninth at Shine with some okay losses, like Seraph and Axiom aren't too bad, Nido Sharp and Black Twins, one loss tech wins on Meister, Lima, Zomba, Esam, Hungry Box, Giddy, Toast, I don't know why he played Toast so early, but he beat him as well as Big House, only losing to Mudeis and Wizzy, the Mudeis stocks, that one basically doesn't hurt you at all anymore, wins on Meister, Slime, RJ, and then this Genesis run where he lost to Moxie and Gluttony, but got wins on Klaatu, which is all more zero suit, which is very, very difficult, and then H4, Nido Sharp, MK Big Boss, Leon, EU Leon, Siski, and DeBuzz, which again, all Mars Zero Suit, he was playing on fire. Mars, like, when he looks good, Mars is still, like, your top 5, top 10 player in the world. Top 3 caliber, Mars can beat literally anyone in the game. But sometimes he is a little bit inconsistent. Though Summit is a format where you have a lot of redos. You have a lot of chances to make up for your mistake. Even if you have just a shocker first two days, you are just playing garbage you can still recover it on that third day and make a bit of a loser's run mars is a player that i think could benefit very heavily from that because when he is playing good he looks absolutely unstoppable i think he'd be a treat to see at summon as well as a the content king going to the content tournament it would always be a nice see on to our wild card category the biggest wild card in the game right now is probably going to be lugi maybe quid as well but lugi is like I have no idea how he would go, but I think it would be very hyped to see him at Summit. He obviously has this win here at Tech Republic 6. Definitely his best performance. Wins on Paint, Quick, Naitoru, and Mr. R twice. Like... This is a very impressive one. Winning a major with Luigi is really hard to do, as well as some decent performances at VCA, boss battle. He won regen as well, got some good wins along the way there. 13th at Colossal, got some good wins. Like, Lugi is just such an impressive player, and I don't think we've ever seen him at an NA major, so it could be pretty hyped to see him at Summit. Again, that's an environment where you have a lot of time to adapt, and I think a lot of people, when they travel for the first time, that is going to be their first, like, big issue is like, okay, they're not used to playing across land, not in their comfort zone, especially, like, Summit's a different environment. 
environment as well. No crown, maybe he'd benefit from it. But I think Luki could cause some serious damage. But he could also just get, like, you know, Luigi matchup. Because there was a lot of very good Luigi players in NA as well. So I'd be very interested to see how he would do. But mainly, I just want to see more of Luigi because he is unreal. The next one is going to be Shattuck, the young gun. Shattuck's consistency is crazy. And you can see him getting slowly better over time. Like, here... 49, 33rd, 13, 33rd. This is kind of where he's usually getting. He's usually getting in this 33rd range. Then he gets this top eight at Big House. And then it's 17th, 17th at two S plus super majors. Both these tournaments were massive. Got an Odin win as well. He's proven that he can beat these super top caliber players. Shattuck is so good. I think, again, these environments where these players can just grind that are kind of up and covers. I would say Shattuck, out of all the people we've mentioned so far, maybe Lugi as well, is one of the bigger up and covers because he's just so young. He does have a lot of reps under his belt, granted, but I think the more the better, you know. Shattuck is absolutely phenomenal. I think he really could contest against a lot of these amazing players, as well as Korin. It's just a character that I think fits very interesting into the current meta right now because they do well in certain matchups. They do bad in certain matchups. They're kind of like that mid sword fighter where it's like, yeah, they're not better than these sword fighters, but they're not worse than these ones, and being a mid-sword fighter in Ultimate means you're, like, probably high tier, maybe, maybe, maybe top tier if you're a core believer. I could honestly see it. This character is ridiculous, but Shattuck, probably the best core in the world right now. Him or Neo or, I guess, Leo, but I'd probably give it to Shattuck. He is just absolutely unreal. Sorry for ranting a bit, but, like, vote for Shattuck. He is very, very good. Sorry my mic cut out, but our final player in this wildcard category is going to be Void. Void? I have no idea how he would do it Summit, but we are going to have some more data from him. I think he's going to level up Expo and then maybe going to Collision, but I know he's going to level up Expo, so depending on how he does there, I maybe should put him in that top player category, because when Void is like full focused on a game, playing good, he is very, very scary. His Sheik is, is unreal. Like, I've been seeing the stuff he's been doing on Quitter. Those Jupe combos, that shouldn't be a thing. How is he landing that consistently? That is absolutely unreal. When Void touches you at like 50, you're probably going to die. When Void touches you at zero, you're probably going to go to 50 and then lose neutral against him because he is so fundamentally solid. He's such a lab rat. His combos are absolutely unreal. Whenever Void touches you, there's a very high chance that you could die. Just such a scary player. And even though he hasn't been super focusing on this game, he still has decent performances, right? Like this 49th at Genesis is pretty good. And he got a Repo win as well. And Repo is a very, very good player. He got 9th at MSM 0 with a very, very close set to Andrik. If you haven't watched that set, I'd highly recommend it because it's a banger. A little off topic, I know, but hey, it's a bit of a ranty video. But Void is an absolutely phenomenal player. I'd highly recommend you voting him in for Summit because I think he could not only do a lot of cool stuff, but like get some major, major upsets. Up next is our Up and Comers tier. And these are all players that I think would benefit massively from going to Summit just because a lot of them don't have a ton of reps under their belt. And Summit is a place where you just get a ton of experience. Speaking of not a lot of reps, we start off with Shiny Mark, who has three total majors in Ultimate, and one of them he top aided with wins on MK Big Boss, Siski, Waka, and Wadi. Shiny Mark is absolutely phenomenal, and he's one of the few players in the world that can make Pikachu look good, because when you're not playing Pikachu at the super, super top level, this character looks very bad. Well, when Pikachu is playing good, the way Shiny Mark plays it especially, this character looks like they actually are, which is, you know, top five in the game. Shiny Mark is absolutely phenomenal. I just really, really want to see more of him, because I think he has so much potential as a player, and the character that he plays allows him to do very well in the meta, though a little bit inconsistent Pikachu can be. I think Shiny Mark is absolutely incredible, and I would love to see him have a chance to prove himself. Our next player is going to be Kronos, who has been very consistent in this game. Even with this 97th at Genesis, every other state player did really bad at Genesis, so I'm not going to hold it against him too much, but he has this really strong string of tournaments right here with 13th at Let's Make Big Moves. Wins on Meister in Snake Game Watch, which is absolutely unreal. Leon and Zomba. Main Sage got a win on T, which is crazy, and on Port Party, he got a win on Tweak, and even though he did lose the run back, he has beaten, like, multiple top 10 players, a bunch of top 20 players. Like, Kronos just has these absolutely insane wins. I think he's such an amazing player with so much potential to him. And again, Summit is a place where players just get way, way more experience. And while Kronos has way more experience than Shiny Mark, again, that's kind of a low bar because Shiny Mark doesn't have a ton of stuff and some other people on this list won't have as much stuff. I think Kronos is a player with a lot of potential. We don't see him at a ton of majors. It looks like he's going to be traveling a little bit more this year, at least from like the events he's been going to, just going to more stuff. I think he could be a serious threat. He already is a serious threat. And honestly, a little bit of bias here. I like Snake. Just give me more Snake at Summit. Like, please.
Our next player is going to be Squid Plumber. Also, the entrance is at 300 here instead of the normal 100 from Majors, just because MDVA be having like 250 people locals, because why not? So we're going to be having it at 300. These are all the Majors that he's been to, at least the recent ones that we care about, with the best ones being Apex and Glitch Regen. Wins on Ned, Yoshi, and Alternus. Wins on Suarez, Icy Mist, Hungry Box, Fawn. Got a John Numbers win at Let's Make Moves. Crazy they had to play this early. And Squid Plumber's had a couple low performances like SmashCon. It's SmashCon, so some people are going to do that. He still went like 4-2, not that bad. And then this one again, he lost to Tweak and Cosmo. Those losses don't super hurt you, especially the Tweak one that doesn't hurt you at all. But Squid Plumber is a player who has shown signs of greatness, and I think Summit is an event where he could just get so much better. And also, at the last Summit, we had T3 Dom, another Belmont player who is probably still the best Belmont in the world right now. Absolutely crazy. He weighed out of his mind. So, passing of the torch, our next Belmont player, it kind of has to be Squid Plumber. Again, I don't make the rules, that's just how the cookie crumbles, but I think he's a player that could cause some serious damage, make some pretty big upsets, and also just get, like, way, way better, and I think having a scary Belmont in bracket is just always something that's fun to watch. And our final up-and-comer player is going to be Desmona, and really quick, let's just look at his entire offline career, because why not, it'll be fun. First place here, and then he has first, second, first, 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 seventh, and fourth. His worst ever performance is seventh at a Super Major. This is is not normally. This is unreal. He only ever lost to at least the tournaments that he lost at. He lost to Comet, who is a very good Fox player. I think he's also in the running for Summit, so if you want to see more sick Fox, go over for Comet, of course. Main Stage only loses to Apollo Kage and Kurama, who are both top 20 in the world. And then the Main Stage, Arcanian Bracket, only losing to Enhanced PV and Candle. Enhanced PV is Cloud Steve, and Enhanced PV is like, those stocks are going way, way up, so that's not bad at loss at all. Same thing for Candle, honestly. Candle is just absolutely incredible. But Desmona just shows, like, this is like, Aqua type sets like not obviously like quite the level because Aqua is still an anomaly but this is absolutely unreal wins on Peckham, Riddle, Zenodo, Osimo, Chag, Frog, Kirash, Tyrex, Comet a bunch of times at this local and probably some other pretty good players I just think Desmona we've seen literally nothing from him I think he has a decent amount of tournaments online because I think that's how he qualified for the arcade as well and just got to go to Summit or rather main stage if we could see Desmona at Summit I think he has potential to top 8 the whole thing he could upset a bunch of amazing players he just has so much potential and we just haven't seen anything from it again this is his only major and he got 7th place beating 2 like top 30 20 top 10 for riddles caliber players in the world Desmona is so, so good. I think seeing him at Summit could be not only very good for him, because again, very, very young player. He hasn't gone to a ton of stuff. That stuff is always going to help in Summit. But I just think he could make some like serious, serious upsets if he was able to go. And the final two players that I want to mention are Nature and Chase, just because I couldn't really find a category to fit them in. I was going to put them in up and comers, but like they're already doing consistently well at a bunch of events like Nature has this Genesis performance where you got to win on Salt 1. You have Chase, same Genesis, got to win on Riddles and Dark Wizzy and Suinoko. Chase, Chase is so, so good. This consistency is, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. It is absolutely unreal. I don't think he has a top 8 and a major yet. Big emphasis on yet, like, it is bolded, underlined three times, circled. He will be getting that top eight. Maybe it'll be at Summit. I wouldn't honestly be that surprised. Chase is absolutely phenomenal. And Nature has already experienced those highs. He has this fifth at Tech Republic. But I want to look at this Colossal run because, my lord, it's good. He has wins on Gojesta, Bloom Forever, and Nitox with a seventh place for finish there. Nature and Chase are both phenomenal players that I think could cause some serious, serious damage at Summit. I just couldn't really find a category to put them in, but I did want to mention them. But before we get to the top four, I just want to give a quick mention to Shiner Mark because he is 100% in my top four, like without a doubt. I just don't think he has enough nominations to like realistically put him in there for who I want. But if you guys are sitting on nominations, I know it's a stretch. Let's say, you know, 500 people are just like, hmm, I don't know who to vote for. Tell them to vote for Shiner Mark because he is phenomenal. Such an amazing player. I think he definitely deserves another chance in the spotlight because he's just absolutely incredible one of the best pikachus in the world like he is just he's so so good please vote for shiny mark if you have the nomination spots but without further ado my final four oh sorry this is this is for a later time my bad my bad but my final four is just going to be with these pictures here because i don't want to be biased on the internet that would be completely unprofessional me so these are just going to be four pictures i'll let you figure out who these players would be and my reasoning is nasty with it super clutch sick with it and disgusty with it and i thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed again if i didn't mention your favorite top player i'm sorry i can't cover everyone in this video of course if i didn't mention the player that doesn't mean i don't think they deserve to be in summit because there's a bunch of amazing people that i think could do really well or get a lot of experience just improve as players i think they'd all be amazing to see 
literally everyone that could get on this list, I'd be happy with, because again, level of flight ultimate right now is very high. Everyone is pretty much deserving of that slot, but I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Curious what you think. Of course, let me know down below. Go support the players that I mentioned, especially these top four. If you could figure them out, if you could figure all four players out, I will give you a big thumbs up personally. Trust me, that is a promise, but I thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to sub. All that yada yada support's been absolutely unreal lately, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.